The sermon you are about to listen to is by Pastor Abraham Damilola Arigi. You can contact our ministry by visiting our website at streamglobe.org or devotional.ng. You can also contact us via telephone by calling 0801-3822-4547 or plus 234-802-168-0251. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's sit down in God's presence as kings and queens that he has made us. So he seated us in heavenly places far above principalities and powers. Amen. Do you believe that? We are seated in Christ. Okay, the first question is, are you in Christ? If you are in Christ, then everything that you see that happened to Christ, you share in it. Jesus Christ said, abide in me. He said, abide, abide. And then Apostle Paul did, did a lot of teaching about, about what has happened to us because we are in Christ. We are in Christ. See this phone? This phone is a good phone. Um, it is now inside my pocket. If I go to that office and sit down on that chair, the phone will also go to that office. Why? Because the phone is inside my pocket. If I enter an aeroplane, you know, I leave this place now and I enter an, an aeroplane. As long as this phone is in my pocket, the phone will also enter the aeroplane. No, so. And I fly to anywhere, New York. Where would the phone be? New York. Why? Does the phone have the ability to locate anything no praise the lord you see when you are in christ that is our that is the secret of our protection so what we should bother about is we should we should understand what it means to abide in him he said if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask whatever you will from the Father and he will do it for you. Why? Because you abide in me. Remain. I like the translation that says remain. Abide is a very heavy sounding word. Remain in me. Because what happened to you the day you became born again? Amen. What happened to you the day you became born again? You decided to surrender your life to Jesus. You decided to submit to the lordship of Jesus. It says, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, you believe unto righteousness. And what is that confession? If you confess it to your mouth, the Lord Jesus. What does that mean? What, why is it a confession? When it is a confession, it is a product of the heart. It is not just a recitation. You believe first before you actually make a confession. Hallelujah. Now, you confess the Lord Jesus. It means that you admit you surrender you accept him as your lord and savior for as many as received him god gave them power to become sons of god even to them that believe on his name and one of the things the benefits that come with this is the name the name that name the name of the lord jesus you need amen that name is powerful it says as many as received him god gave them what power to become the sons of God even to them that believe in that name it's well I don't that's now our topic it is unfortunate that there are believers today that have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior but they don't know the power of the name they don't use the name it says the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous runs into it and they are saved so, uh, some months ago I was praying and the Lord told me he said I've given you some I, I'm not using the exact words. I don't remember the exact, but I, I, get, I got the message. There are some things I have given you that you, for your benefits. There are benefits. One is the name. The name of Jesus. Let's open to Acts chapter 3 verse 16. The name of Jesus. Another one is the blood of Jesus. Amen. 
But you cannot, the name cannot be powerful in your mouth if you do not have faith in the name. Another one is the power of the Holy Spirit. It's possible to be born again and you know you were born again by the work of the Holy Spirit in you and not know how to commune with the Holy Spirit. Not know how to relate with the Holy Spirit. Not know how to, to tap into his power. It says the grace of the Lord Jesus the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. There are many believers that don't know the communion of the Holy Spirit. And that communion is, 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 is one of the things that makes for our power. Acts chapter 3 verse 16. This thing is not showing up. Okay. Let's read it from here. You will see that the first recorded miracle by the apostles after the church was inaugurated you see how this miracle happened there are different ways miracles can be administered there was a time that people were taking cloths aprons from paul and there was so much virtue in him that smeared on those aprons and people were healed as a result of that but let us see how this miracle and on the basis of faith in Jesus' name, his very name has made this man whom you see and know strong. The faith that is true Jesus has given him this complete health in the presence of you all. Amen. Amen. So how did this miracle happen? It was through faith in his name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are safe. How do you run into the name of the Lord? What does that scripture mean? How is the name of the Lord a strong tower? All right. Um, have you seen people that got married? Women. Maybe they are from very prominent families. I will give an example that we, can, we may all be able to relate with. Then, because of their father's name, maybe the name of their husband's son's name is, is Henry. So they are, supposed to, they are not supposed to be Mrs. Henry. But the, the name of the father is so strong. And she knows that that name eh, in this world system is a power. She will put her father's name before her husband's name. In fact, there are some people that even after they are married, they will not drop their father's name because they know that if, praise the Lord, they know that if, do you know that it's not everybody. Now, I happen to have some security friends, some people who work in the police, friends, police, you know, military and all of that. It is not everybody that a kidnapper will kidnap. You don't, oh, you don't know. Let me tell you something. If kidnappers are kidnapping and maybe somebody, you know, some boys are just on there and they are kidnapping people and they, and they saw the son of the president there and they know that it is the son of the president. When they are kidnapping other people, they would, if they are, I'm not talking about foolish kidnappers that don't know anything. These real smart ones, especially those international class, they won't kidnap the son of the president though. <laughs> you know why? They don't want the wahala. See, they will mobilize all the soldiers in Nigeria too, and they will catch those kidnappers. So they don't want that trouble. So they will kidnap everybody and say, you, I go. You know why? The name. Are you now understanding how the name of the Lord is a strong tower? The righteous runs into it and they are safe. There are many times that, there are many demons that if you know how to abide in the name of the Lord, wear it as a badge. There are many demons that when they, they are t- touching people, when they see you, they will say, I beg, leave him more. We don't want trouble. We don't want trouble. We don't want trouble. We don't want trouble. Leave him. Leave him. Before you know now, they will send in Jamaica. <laughs> Just leave him. <laughs> because he's abiding in the name. Amen. So the next time you are in a place and it looks ashamed to be a Christian. It will be more convenient for you to do as if you are not a Christian. 
For a person that abides in the name will not be ashamed of Jesus there. I'm, t- I'm trying to let you know how to abide in the name. There are some, there are some interviews you may go for and you know that by the time you, you're, you have a name <laughs> that will reveal that you're a Christian Christian. You know, there are names like um, um, Salvation. And you know that these people don't like God. And then you, or you know that these people may not like you if they know that you are born again. And then you now decide, hey, Jesus power, thank you. Jesus will fool me. <laughs> but for a believer that we abide in his name, we not, we not shy away from that name. Just like that woman, we not, we not, she, we are, she's proud of that name. Amen. Wear that badge. How will the kidnappers know that that person is the president's son? Maybe he's wearing a, an ID card and they saw the president's name on it. And what will happen, let me tell you something, as you become more like Christ, spiritually, and it will affect your character and physically. Amen? You will look like him. When demons see you, they will seek Christ because you are carrying his glory. Amen? He said, um, you all, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord are transformed into the same image. Now, you would think that when you are transformed into the same image, it is from resemblance to resemblance. No, be so. It says from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of God. When you wear the name of the Lord as a you are not ashamed to identify with Him. The name of the Lord is your, you depend on the name of the Lord. You have faith in the name of the Lord. Listen, the name of the Lord is indeed a strong tower. When you dwell in His name, when you run into His name, you will be safe. The demons know they are mate. They will warn themselves not to near your house. In fact, as soon as you start becoming friends with somebody, they will warn themselves to stay away from that person. You know that it's possible that there are some people that the devil would have killed. The reason why the devil could not kill them is because they are your friend. Yes, because the devil knows that if the person now becomes sick now, ha, before you know it now, this is friend will start doing spiritual inquiry. They will now focus their spiritual missile in our direction. Please leave him alone, no? Praise the Lord. These things I'm telling you are real, though. They are real. So please carry the name of the Lord. Carry the name of the Lord. Nobody, you were not born again from the womb. So before you were born again and you were given that name, there was another name that you carried and I don't, know what, I don't know the name of that name. But now that you are born again, you need to abide in him. There is protection in that name. Huh? What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus our King. Abide in that name. Hallelujah. Where were we opening? Okay, we've opened them. Verse 16. We are going to continue from where we stopped tomorrow, but there's going to be a little twist to it because the theme for this conference is the resurrection power. Amen. If you know me very well, you will know that there are some scriptures I like. And if I preach five times, you will hear those scriptures. You, I, I may quote it once. I want to read one of those scriptures. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16 to the end of that chapter. Is this verse 16? Okay, give me verse 15. Okay, now, the Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. How do you buy the truth? Amen. How do you buy the truth? Buying the truth does not necessarily mean you are going to buy a Christian book. It's part of it. But how do you, in re, because it's possible for you to buy a Christian book and still not acquire the truth because you didn't read it. So how do you buy the truth? You buy the truth by paying attention 
by listening, 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 listening. When the word of God is given like this, you pay full rapt attention. Now, when we are in a place like this, one of the, the devil is very creative. One of his assignments in this environment, because there are very few things he can do. There are angels here. But one of the few things he will try to do is to distract you. Or to make you fall asleep. So you need to realize that it is warfare. Fight it. So that you will not be distracted. So the way you buy the truth, what you use to buy the truth is your attention. It's focus. That's what you give to receive the truth. It says, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. I'm not reading this thing in King James. Let me read it in a simpler translation. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. Amen. Please don't forget that message about the name of the Lord, though. Please. Wear that name as a badge of honor. Amen. Amen. Dwell in that name. Abide in that name. Believe in that name. When you, the next time you call the name of the Lord, next time you call upon the Lord, know that there is power in the mention of that name. Hallelujah. Can we just mention that name together? Jesus. One more time. Jesus. There is power in that name. He says, For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you when I remember you in prayers. Apostle Paul used to pray for the people that he was discipling and the people he knew that he was going to be ministering to. I think that is very, very instructive for all, for those of us who are ministers. He said, I pray. Now, now, this is the content of his prayer. If you read chapter 3 again, you'll see another prayer content he revealed. He said, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you spiritual wisdom and revelation in your growing knowledge of him. What did he say we may give you? Spiritual wisdom. And what? revelation in your growing knowledge of who of him in order for your knowledge of him to be growing and to be sustained you need these two um blessings the first one is spiritual wisdom and revelation i have met people that don't have too much education but they are spiritually wise they have spiritual wisdom. And it's possible for someone to be very, very wise in this world, although it's rare. Because wisdom is kind of, it's, it's, wisdom is actually supposed to be spiritual. But it's, it's possible for someone to be very, very wise or crafty and be very, very shallow in spiritual wisdom and understanding. Amen? I've met people, they, don't believe, they are not believers, they are not Christians. But when it comes to spiritual things, they have, they have, on, they are wise. So you see them that even though they are not Christians, they are not believers, they honor their father and their mother. They are very important people, but they don't play. Maybe their father is late. They don't play with their mother. Praise the Lord. Anyway, that's not what we are talking about. It says he prays that God will, the Father of Glory, may give them spiritual wisdom and revelation in the growing knowledge of God. So in order for your knowledge of God to, to keep growing, you need this thing, spiritual wisdom. You did. You did it. It says, you being filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. That you may walk worthy in a manner pleasing to the Lord. Uh, you may be fruitful in every good work. And grow in the knowledge of God. You see, when I'm talking about growing in the knowledge of God, you see this topic, this thing keeps coming up. Spiritual wisdom, understanding, and revelation. Spiritual wisdom, understanding, and revelation. Now, in order for us to understand spiritual wisdom, we may, borrow, we may try to understand what does it mean to be wise you know, in this world. You say, ah, that boy is very wise. You know, you say, ah, that boy is very wise. Say so that boy is very knowledgeable. He's very wise. That woman is ah, that woman is a wise woman. You know, Jesus Christ said wisdom is known by his children. Most of the time, people will say that woman is a wise after the, the product of her wisdom has manifested. Maybe the, the time that she was 
at walking in that wisdom, people may be saying, what is, what is she up to? What is he doing? In fact, what he may be doing may not make sense. But it is when it has produced fruit, they'll say, ah! This person was, this man is wise. That's how wisdom is too, when it comes to spiritual wisdom. There are some things that you, if you have spiritual wisdom, I understand. There are some things that you may be doing now. Your family members will be wondering that. What is Kilon She? Is it that, sorry, what is he doing? Is it that he doesn't have a plan for his life? Mm, amen. But at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, all of them will say, eh, he was so wise. He was so wise. You know, in the next 2,000 years, everybody inside this room will be alive. In the next 2 million years, everybody, this body of this flesh would have died in a give, give and take 100 years. Every, nobody here will be physically alive. Except the rapture happens before, before that time. But this, your body is just like a clot. Your, the real you is your soul and your spirit. You will still be conscious in the next one million years. You will remember today. You think memory is... Memory is not... Hmm, okay. You know what they call cloud storage and local storage? That's how your spirit... You know, cloud storage is... Uh, it's technology term. Timo... Amen. Cloud storage and local storage. Like if you use Telegram now, if I send you a message, the message is sent. By the time I access my phone, even if I lose this phone and I get another phone and I install Telegram, I'll see all the messages I sent to you. The reason is because the message was on the cloud storage. But even right now, if I send you a message and I go out of network and there's no network connection on the phone, I can still access it locally. Why? Even though there is no network, because it is stored locally in the phone also, but it is also stored in the cloud. The cloud is just, you know, a, it's just a way of expressing servers that are, that you connect with through the internet. That's how your spirit and your and your body is. There are many things you know in your brain, but I, let me tell you something: your spirit actually has the ability to remember everything that you know now is also being stored in your spirit's memory. That's why um, Abraham told, you remember the story of Lazarus, the rich man? And when um, Lazarus died, and the rich man died, and they got to, Lazarus went to the bosom of Abraham's paradise, the rich man went to hell, he was an unrighteous man, and then the rich man was begging Father Abraham to send Lazarus, please, bring just a drop of water to quench this test. This is unbearable, just a drop of water. And then, um, Abraham said it's not possible. He cannot get to you and you cannot get to us. He said, son, remember that when you were on earth. So the point I'm making is that even in that realm, you will be able to remember. There are decisions that you are making now that it is in the next 1,000 years that some of your family members will say, hey, they will remember. They will remember. One of the opportunities that time on earth gives us is it gives us an opportunity to know God in ways that we will not... Now, I say this carefully and humbly. It gives us an opportunity to be able to know God in ways that we will not... We will no longer have the opportunity to know him when we leave this body. You are saying, huh? Yes. I'm like, What? You mean I can know God more than the angels? Absolutely. Did Jesus die for the angels? Does the Holy Spirit dwell inside angels? You know one reason why the Holy Spirit can dwell inside you? is because your body, your what? Your body is his temple. Amen. Can angels fellowship in the fellowship of his suffering? 
Can any angel come, come in the next one million years and tell Jesus that, Jesus, remember that we suffer together? Oh, oh, you don't know that you'll be able to tell Jesus on that day that, Jesus, remember how we suffer together? It's called the fellowship of his suffering. If you ever go through any challenge, let me tell you one reason why the devil hates you so much. If you, you, you have a little spiritual understanding, you know that you, you, you would have realized that the devil really hates you. And the fact that you are alive is because of the mess. As soon as you became born again, you became committed to the kingdom of God. You realize that the devil really hates you. If you would just be walking like this and this people would just collapse. If the devil had that power, it would just collapse on you and you would die. I'm not kidding. Every tribulation you face on earth because of your relationship with God, every persecution you face that the devil orchestrates using his children against you because you carry the name of the Lord, every challenge you face in the name of the Lord, Jesus is with you in that suffering. Do you remember Jesus Christ told Saul, Shaul, that's the way they pronounce that name in Hebrew. He says, Saul, Saul, why had, are you persecuting me? The, who was he persecuting? The church. But Jesus Christ said, you are persecuting me. You know why? Because the church is in him. Now, let's go back to this phone. If this phone is in my pocket, and the phone begins to vibrate unnecessarily, will I feel it? If the phone begins to get so hot, and let's say the phone had feelings, and the phone is not comfortable, will I feel it? That's what happens when we are in him. So, when we are passing through sufferings in his name, it is a, Paul referred to it as a fellowship of his suffering. You cannot know, amen. So, may God help us in Jesus' name. It says that I may know him. Let's open to that Philippians chapter 3 verse 11. Thank you, sir. <laughs> it's already there. It says, my goal, is this King James? Let's have King James, sir. My goal is that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. One of the first things that you will experience in this thing called the knowledge of God is power. Amen? 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 The gospel is what? It's the power of God. One of the first things you will experience as you begin to know the Lord. Because when you become born again, you have been brought, you have been initiated into a way. You have been initiated into the knowledge of God. But you can grow in this knowledge. I'm supposed to be a Christian for 20 years and not grow in the knowledge of God. It's unfortunate, but it's possible. And I said that there are two tools or three that are very instrumental in this growing knowledge. Spiritual wisdom, understanding, and what? Revelation of him. Amen. Amen. One of the first things you will encounter in your growing knowledge of God, as you begin to grow in knowing God, as you begin to grow in knowing God, <laughs> amen? amen? As you grow in the knowledge of God, one of the first things you will encounter is power. Is power. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor one of the first preach to your neighbor one of the first things you will encounter is power. Now, just so we'll be clear, there are different kinds of power. Even the devil has power. Oh, you know now. At least this is Africa. I met some people when I was in NYC. They schooled in the UK. I don't believe in demons. I don't believe in all that stuff. My fa her father is a pastor. <laughs> I'm sure she believes. If she remained in Nigeria, I'm sure she must have seen things. <laughs> she said, her father is always praying. Always praying for them in the night. Lay hands on them when they are sleeping. As if it's disturbed. I said, that's why you, that's why you can sit down here and say, I don't believe in demons. <laughs> Anyway, the point I'm making is that there, is, there are different kinds of power. There are different kinds of power. The devil has power. Demons have their own level of power. Sorcerers have power. 
false prophets have power that's why people gather to them but there's a kind of power that we have been exposed to amen and even in the king okay let's not go there because of time but there is a there is a category of power that we can that we have access to and this measure this this realm this category this what this class of power is only available to those that know him it's possible do you, amen it's possible to be a christian and you don't you, you believe in jesus but you don't know him yet jesus is not yet a real person to you you don't know his voice and because you know how to use his name and you have faith in his name you can command power in his name are you are we together it's even possible for you to just know how to hmm, amen you know you say many people will come on that day and say lord lord we cast out devil in your name we we heal the sick in your name and we say depart from me i never knew you now is it possible for you to know him and he will not know you no but i'm talking about there is a class of power there is a category there is a dimension of power there is a there is a there is an intensity of power that is only available to those that know him and what we have been called to because when jesus christ said my sheep <laughs> anyway many people do my sheep does not mean that you believed in you believed in jesus and you ran away because it's possible to believe i know people they believed in jesus in fact i know people they believed in jesus and they were baptized in the holy ghost the same day with the evidence undoubted evidence of speaking in tongues and some of them even prophesying but they did not remain they didn't abide in him they went back to the world yes i'm not i'm 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 telling you people i know some of them, I was not a people that prayed for them, but they did not remain. You see, for such people, they know they, they, they know power. There is all kinds of there is power in God, but they cannot have access to this thing called power of his resurrection. <laughs> okay, let's continue to that Ephesians chapter 1, verse. And I will tell you the difference between the power of his resurrection and just knowing normal power. Because many people just know normal power. They don't know the power of resurrection. Power past power. Oh. Amen. It says, verse, uh, the, the previous verse, so that we can read it in context. It says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know the first thing he wanted us to know is the hope of his calling. I've spent a lot of time teaching on that hope. When I keep talking about the resurrected body, you will rule and reign with Christ. You will, amen. The hope of his calling. It's important for you to know this hope because this is the, the faith is the substance of things hoped for. In order for your faith to be stable, amen, through the thick and thin, your faith must be predicated on the blessed, this hope. There are many hopes. There are some people that gave their life to Jesus Christ because of family problem. So what will now happen when the family problem is solved? Are you understanding? Some people gave their life to Jesus Christ because of financial problem. There was affliction in their family. And then they, they had faith that God will solve that financial problem. And God, the power of God is all over. Is it, uh, the Bible says knowledge of the glory of God shall cover the earth like waters cover Jesus. You know what the glory of God, you cannot separate the glory of the king. The, anyway, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Wherever you see the glory of God, the power of God is there. And then they became born again and then family problem was solved. Financial problem was solved. What will now happen to their faith when they now have money? Have you noticed that some people, some people were very, they were very religious. Now if they are as soon as they became millionaires, they didn't have time for God again. When you talk about faith, faith is always in the environment of hope. And the hope for which your faith should be predicated is called the faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. That means there are different kinds of faiths. But there is an original faith. It's called the holy faith. 
This one is predicated on the blessed hope. And this hope, all of these things, these expectations will begin from when the Lord returns. There are many things that we have even to your body that I, the best we can do is just work. Our minds are too small to understand the dimension of the glory that will be revealed in us. He said, beloved, now are we sons of God. But what we are has, have not yet been revealed. But when the Lord comes, we know that we shall be, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. There is so much about you that you don't know. Amen. Amen. So the first thing he said he was praying was that they will know the eyes of their understanding may enlighten. These were already, these were already believers. He said, when he heard that they, were, they, they became believers, they started praying. So it's possible for you to be a believer and these things have not happened to you. That the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened, that they will know the hope of his calling. You see, when you offer this prayer, praise is predicated on this hope. The devil does not know. So the devil will still be trying his luck around you. Because everything that the devil does against you, every warfare you have ever faced, it is a fight against your faith. That's why the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. He said, he said, what the devil is going for is your faith. Do you remember Job? What was the devil going for? It was his faith. But when you have discovered this blessed hope, the fact that even though you are a believer and there is no money in your account, there is no money in your pocket, it will not have faith. The devil wanted, ah, but we attack these finances now. Why is his faith still strong? Because your faith is no longer predicated on mundane things. Remember that faith is what? The substance of things hoped for. In modern English, we say faith is the substance of our sure expectations in God. My heart bleeds when I see believers gathered in numbers and everything, all, everything that they are focused on are things that Dangote already has. Everything they are praying for, they are fasting for, are things that Dangote, Dangote will not pray about. Let me tell you something. Let, make no mistake. If you touch this power of resurrection, there is nothing. It can, it's higher power always solves lower problems. But lower power cannot solve higher problems. Amen. So it says that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are hmm, <laughs> uh, what are the glorious riches of his inheritance among the saints? If you know how rich... <laughs> anyway. I used to say this. I say when the Lord returns and we are ruling and reigning over the earth, that's when the world will know what they call riches. I'm not talking about... I'm talking about wealth. Say jokingly. Say our government will be so wealthy. There is no government in this world today that can afford to pave their roads with gold. You know, golden people, there is no government that can afford it. Not even those super wealthy, tiny countries that have more oil than they can imagine. They cannot afford it. They don't, there is even, we don't have that, we have not discovered that volume of gold in the world for anybody to be able to pave his roads with gold. You want to talk about riches? The least person in this reign, in the kingdom of God, when the Lord returns, I'm talking about in the reign on this earth. This, I'm not talking about, Amen. Eternity is longer and not. On this earth, the least person in, among us that will be part of this reign will be greater than the wealthiest person in the world before Jesus came. Physically. One day we went for baptism in Meme. This river here. And, you know, I've always gone there, gone there as a child, so I never really appreciated the river. It's a very, that place we went for baptism is very beautiful. The landscape there is, is breathtaking, international standard. And so, the last time I went for baptism, I went with a phone and I just looked at it, looked at the rocks, looked at the water in dry season, look at the vegetation and all of that. I said, wow, see real estate. You understand? And because I know what's going on, no matter how well you are, you cannot buy that place because it's government, it's river, it's government property. I now thought, I said, hmm. I said, then I just remember, I said, hmm, we are going to inherit it. Amen. We inherit it. You you now know why the spirit and the bride says, "Come." One of the pray- when you when the Lord has opened your eye to this first prayer point, one of the prayers that you'll be praying sincerely as a Christian is that Jesus will come. 
He will come soon. It's a backsliding church that says, Jesus, wait. Because you, you realize that when, if Jesus comes today, eh, your glory will be revealed in time. You will not know pain and sickness again, ever. Amen? Amen. You know what it means to have the glorified body. Anyway, so, the second is, what is the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints? This one goes beyond time and space. This goes beyond time and space. Because this earth, even after the millennial reign, the earth will pass away. But it's possible to have riches that when the earth passes away, you will still be rich. Amen? Are, are you now realizing that the kingdom of God... <laughs> okay, let's continue, sir. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Now, this is even where I'm going to. You know, we are talking about... I said that the first thing you will encounter... Because some of these things are things that are going to happen when the Lord returns. But there is something that you can encounter while still in this body of flesh. The disciples asked Jesus Christ, they said, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Because they understood. You think those men were... Like, see, they were not... By the time they followed, decided to follow Jesus, it was just that they were smart guys. Amen? It was not that they were... It was just that they were... They happened to be smart. They were wise. And they ah, they, this is the Messiah. They were Jews. They, knew, they, knew, they, knew, they, they know who the Messiah is. Do you remember when the mother of one came to meet Jesus? I said, good afternoon, sir. Ah, sir, I just want to ask for one request. Ah, Madam, talk now. Ah, please. Uh, in your kingdom, please, sir. Can you just grant that my two sons, you know they've been following, you know they left their business. The other one said, has two children and a wife. Since he started following you, his wife only sees him once in six months. I'm listening. Please, sir. Can you grant that in your kingdom when you eventually come and be king of the earth, king of the world, and you are ruling as the Messiah? Let one of them be on your right hand and the other of you on your left. <laughs> Amen. Ah. If Nayunko, she saw an opportunity. She, they had it. she was liberating on, on her relationship with Jesus. And Jesus Christ said, Ah, well, can they drink the cup? And it's, you, know, you know the story. And she said, Yes, they can. Even though she did not ask them. And Jesus Christ said, Well, this will be the decision of God to make, of the Father to make. So they were asking Jesus after Jesus resurrected, before he ascended, that will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Because they were asking about what I'm talking about, what I've been talking about for some time. This millennial reign of Christ, ruling, having all authority, being the, Jesus ruling the whole earth from Israel, from the capital city of the world, then will be Jerusalem. It's, it's called the city that the Lord loves. The Lord rebuked you, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem. Remember that prayer in um, Zechariah? And um, Jesus Christ said, it is not for you to know the times with, that God has put within his control, but you shall what? Receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, of all of these things we are talking about, one of the things you can experience as you grow in the knowledge of God is power, the resurrection power. Now, let's, let's, let's look go on. It says, this is the third point. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power next 